Oh no, another recession now in 2019? I mean, what causes a recession? Is one on its way? Let's take a look and see. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Jamie Brown of The Head Teacher. This channel is about sharing information to help build your financial intelligence and awareness around money matters. And I'm passionate about educating and inspiring people in wealth and wellness. You see, to be whole, you need to have your health with your wealth. You know, there's a new type of money master in the world today. Times have changed. You have to get onto the same page. It's a new way of thinking, of being, and of understanding. Now join me on this adventure now. Hi, have you got your money in order and heads for this upcoming recession? Do you think it's not going to happen? Then you're one of the very few people who don't. Do you know what has been searched for the most on Google in the last three weeks? Yes, recession. It is time to take a look at this and how it's going to affect you. So, what is a recession? A recession is a significant decline in the economy that lasts from a few months to you know, approximately 18 months. You'll see this in five types of economic indicators. In retail sales, income, employment, gross domestic product, the GDP, and manufacturing. The technical indicator of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth as measured by the country's gross domestic product, the GDP. There was a really big one about 10 years past, but you know that seems like a long time ago. Understanding the likely cause of the next recession will help you evaluate your own vulnerability. Monetary policy hurts interest-sensitive sectors the most whereas oil shocks hurt energy intensive sectors and foreign recession hurts exporters. The most likely cause of our next recession is monetary policy error by the US Federal Reserve, with other possible causes much, mess, less, you know, much, much less likely. Monetary policy has been at fault in most of the post-World War II recessions. Although the Fed has, you know, was created to, to stabilise the economy, it has not met that goal. But they can't, you know, they cannot consistently stabilise the economy. We all have too complex an economy driven through decisions made by millions of Americans and Europeans as consumers, workers, entrepreneurs and government officials. Our economies also interact with 7 billion people around the world. The billions of decision makers are considering changes in their economic circumstances, changes in technology, in their own and others' attitudes, new taxes and regulatory policies, and new competition both for resources and for sales. This is too much complexity to manipulate into stability. In practical terms, the next recession will most likely be triggered by the US Fed tightening credit conditions through raising short-term interest rates and maybe also selling some of their security portfolios. Recession is a normal, albeit unpleasant, part of the business cycle. However, one-time crisis events can often trigger the onset of a recession. Even though recessions are portrayed as short-term events, there are longer-term consequences that come from a period of economic downturn. High unemployment can mean that Affected people and families may be forced to put off savings for or pursuing you know, educational opportunities or buying a home or just saving for a rainy day. The quality of life and standard of living for most people start to decline as well, which can affect the stability of families, their health and overall well-being. Businesses also start to feel the pinch as consumers freeze their spending and small business profits start to decline. Now, what is the difference between a recession and a depression? A depression is a deep and long-lasting recession, 
While no specific criteria exists to declare a depression, unique features of the last US depression, the Great Depression of the 1930s, including a GDP decline in excess of 10% and an unemployment rate of briefly that briefly touched around 25%. Simply, a depression is a severe decline that lasts for many years. There have been 33 recessions in the United States since 1854, but there has been only one depression since then. The only good thing about a recession is that it cures inflation. The Federal Reserve must always balance between slowing the economy enough to prevent inflation without triggering a recession. Politicians who control the federal budget generally try to, you know, they try to stimulate the economy as much as possible through lowering the taxes, you know, the spending on social programs, and ignoring the budget deficit. There is a possibility of a U.S. recession being triggered by a, a foreign recession. Either China or Europe could conceivably trigger a U.S. recession, although current expansion seems to have a reasonable chance of success. But don't get too confident. Recessions have a annoying tendency to strike when people least expect it. <laughs> so my question for you today is, what is one thing that will help you beat a recession? Contact me. Let me know. And I will tell you my view on what will do that. And let me know what subjects you'd like me to cover in the next few weeks. Until next time, this is Jamie Brown, educating and inspiring people in wealth and wellness. Don't keep this a secret. Like, share, and subscribe. And you know, if you don't hedge your own future, no one else is going to do it for us.